In the previous video, things didn't exactly work out as intended. This time, I'm going to use that experience to push the challenge even further. I'm going to attempt the channel backup again, this time with an even older device. I'll be using an old tape that's already been recorded on many times. In addition, I'm going to do something I didn't get to do last time. Reveal the internal tape mechanism in action. In 1989, Sony released their first video Walkman, a handheld device that could play and record small video tapes. It had an inbuilt LCD screen for viewing on the go. It was mainly intended as a consumer item. By the late 1990s, these devices were also being used in semi-professional applications, such as alarm systems and even portable editing decks. The model I have here is the GV D900, and this was released in 1998. This is the NTSC version. There are many variations on this model, from NTSC or PAL, to versions that use digital 8 tapes instead of mini DV tapes. There were also screenless models, which only had the tape transport section and controls. Opening the lid, we can see the controls, and we can see that this is the Japanese version. I can't read Japanese, however it's the same as the English model, and I do have the English user manual. So it shouldn't be a problem using this. Have a look around the unit. First on this side here, there's a panel to take off. And this is the expansion port for connecting up to other peripherals, such as the previously mentioned editing controls. But also there was a TV tuner available for this model. Having a look at the back of the unit, and this is where the battery goes. And here is the Firewire iLink port which I'll be connecting up to shortly. Over on this side here, here's the LANK remote control. There's a headphone socket, external speaker, and under this panel here is S-Video, composite video, and stereo. This extra little one here is to provide power to the RF modulator. I have a couple of problems with this unit. The first being that I don't have a battery, and I don't have the adapter that goes in here to give it external power. So I'm going to clip directly onto the battery contacts and give it power that way. It's not that big of a problem, but it is a little bit annoying to have to do this. Okay. And the battery is 7.4 volts, so I'll give it probably just above 7.4. And let's turn that on. There we go. Should be able to open the lid. The second problem is this unit seems to have trouble with color video. Although I don't think it's going to affect the backup process, I would like to demonstrate what that problem is. So I'm going to need a color video signal. And here's the picture book. And there's a composite video output. So I can input that into the recorder and then record a color signal. So I'll just get this all set up. Okay, I've got everything powered up. For some reason I can't get it to work with this AV cable, which is meant to output composite video and stereo. I did also try this cable here. That didn't work either. Fortunately, I got it to work with just a stereo audio cable. With the video coming out the red cable side. There we go. So it's now receiving composite video from the computer. So we can now see the problem in that we've got color here but it's coming out black and white on the monitor over here. Uh, the fringing you can see here is just from the camera that I'm using to record this with. So all the settings on here look pretty good. I do have it switched to NTSC, not PAL, for this NTSC recorder. And composite is outputting standard. It's not switched to black and white. So we definitely have a problem not with this output, but with this recorder. Okay, set up, ready to record. So I'll start the tape. Okay, recording has begun. Just let it, there we go, and now I'll play the video, 
and switch it to full screen mode. Okay, well it's recording. Obviously it's showing in black and white on the recorder. I'll see if I can turn up the volume. Oh, that's screen brightness. Volume. Okay. Okay, I'll record that for a bit. Okay, so it's recorded now. I can stop that. Of course, if I play it back, it's going to be in black and white. I'm not expecting anything different yet. There we go. The recording's done. So I can get the computer out of the way for the moment. Okay, so now I'm going to play that back. But I'm going to use an external monitor hooked up to the video out signal. Now my external composite monitor has stopped working. So I'm going to use this HDMI screen instead. And I'm going to have to convert the composite to HDMI using an adapter. It's all getting a bit convoluted, but sometimes this is what happens. Okay, now I need an RCA cable. Okay, we're going to go... Composite video in from the recorder, composite video out. The colours are a bit subdued on this screen, but it's definitely outputting a colour signal. So it has recorded it in colour, and it's outputting colour through the composite output. So that means that the tape mechanism is recording everything in colour as it should, and outputting as it should. The problem is somewhere in this display. Another thing I've noticed is if I bring up some on-screen menus such as that one there we can see that's in yellow. So the display itself is actually able to display color from the on-screen display. Okay but knowing all that I have every reason to believe that the backup should work on this recorder. The problem is just somewhere in the signal from the tape to the screen. I'll now hook up the Firewire cable so just very carefully trying not to bump that dodgy power connector get the firewire connected up firewire into the computer as well it just detected so that should be fine it's time to start the backup, so I'm going to attempt to back up all the videos on my channel again to a single 60 minute mini DV cassette. So let's get that in and get started. I've put all the video files into a RAR archive and it's split into three because Windows Millennium Edition maximum file size is about 4 gigabytes. So I've got a total of 9.14 gigabytes to save to the tape. Start DV Streamer. And we'll just drop the files in. Okay. Give it a session name. Okay, we're going to go to options. And we've got uh, batch mode set. Everything looks good. We're going to set error correction to 50% redundancy. Now with all the error correction turned on, it's going to increase the total data saved by about 50%. So it's going to be close to 15 gigabytes. To fit that onto the tape, I'll be switching from standard play to long play mode. And what that will do, is it will slow down the tape to about 66% the speed of standard play. So it will run for 90 minutes and should fit the 15 gigabytes onto the tape. The slower tape speed makes the tape far more susceptible to dropouts, but I'm hoping that the added error correction more than compensates for the slower tape speed and the higher risk. Okay, everything's set, so I'm going to manually start the recording process. I don't know why it did that, but that's okay, that is recording. 
save file. Right, let's. Okay, it started, looks good. I'm going to mention again from the last video what DV Streamer is doing is it's taking each 8x8 pixel block and it's telling the codec to just make it one single color and that's why we've got all these large pixels on the screen it's then using the unused space in that 8x8 block to save all the data alright we'll leave that going and see what happens okay we've reached the end of the tape and it looks like not all the data fit on the tape about two gigabytes didn't end up fitting it's getting late so I'm going to shut all this down and come back to it another time. I'm going to take a break from the whole backup process. I'm going to take this apart and have a look inside. Do something a bit different for a bit. So I'll just take all the screws out and we'll see what we've got. Screws are out. Some more on the back. I guess I should take off the side panel. Okay, the bottom is off. Get our first look inside. Nice bit of 90s circuit board. Alright, ah, there's a panel on the side there that reveals the backup battery. Okay. Fortunately, there is a service manual available which is going to be quite helpful. This is a little bit of a maze. This is a little bit of a puzzle at times. Okay, lid off. So there's a screw right down in there that I'm going to need to remove according to the service manual. And this screwdriver doesn't reach. Yep, that one just reaches. There's another screw up here. Okay. Now, according to the service manual, there's a few cables I have to detach, but it's close to wanting to come out of the top yeah okay, we'll have to detach that one I'm going to presume this is the display here Detach this cable here. Now let's see if this will start to lift. Might just unplug, unplug this as well. I might detach these cables in case these very gently okay I'll unplug the battery connector for now it's all ready to come out except this wire will have to be unsoldered I wonder if this is an afterthought I don't see why they would have added that to the design all right now let's see what happens very very carefully I'm gonna have 
to remove this outer shell. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, that was actually pretty easy. And there we have the internal mechanism. You can really see that the DV tape mechanism is quite small and there's all this extra padding around so that models that took a video 8 or actually a high 8 or a digital 8 would have just had a different mechanism that would have fitted in the same overall shell. Now I'm going to power this up somehow which I guess means I'll need controls and power. Controls up. Right, so I've got the controls on the side connected up. Let's see what happens when we power up now. Okay. Now power is on. Stop and we'll rewind the tape. Well, that was fun, but now I've got to put everything back together. It's like having a party and then you've got to clean up the next day. And what's even worse is I tore one of the ribbon cables, and it's the cable over here which runs to the firewire port. There's the damaged cable, there's the repaired cable, five wires soldered. Let's see if I can get a close up. That should work. Okay, everything is looking good, everything's plugged in. I might just do a quick power up test. Okay. Leads are connected. Let's give it some power, see what happens. Oh, right, well, that looks alright. Hey, why didn't you pop out? That seems to have clicked back into place. Okay, connected. Let's see what we've got this time. All right, that's fine. There we go, that wasn't too bad. I think that's probably fixed and working just as it was before. It's time to resume the tape backup process. Now, I haven't re-recorded the tape, so there's still some of the archive missing from this. But at this point, I want to test the error correction and see what sort of results I've got. So I'm going to put the tape in and do a restoration and see what happens. Okay, I've got the departition formatted and ready for the backup data. Load up DV Streamer and let's go. So in, and there were some errors during recovery, but they were all corrected. Everything saved to the tape was recovered. I was able to fit about 7 hours of HD 1080p video to this mini DV tape. That's all for now, and remember, make backups in different places and different spaces.